Wary Tales from Mojo, the Twisted Fairy The Monster What is a mad scientist? If you had asked Dr. Craven, he wasn't crazy at all. Sure, he was a bit eccentric, but most geniuses are. He was on a quest to invent something that many people wanted. Immortality. The problem he found was that the body isn't meant to last forever. It wears out and breaks down over time. Now, he'd heard of a spell that could capture one's soul and preserve it in an object for eternity. But he didn't want his soul in just any old object. He wanted something special, so he set out to create the perfect human body, one that would last for all time. The goal was to impart his soul into the body and function as a human. Essentially, he would come back to life and continue with his life's work. It took him years, but using special metals, acrylics, and leathered skin, he completed his design. Finding a sorcerer who could perform the magic spell was the last piece of the puzzle. But sometimes, fortune favors the bold, and Dr. Craven found his enchanter. They were kindred souls who were both interested in immortality. The duo worked together, perfecting the body and the spell. It took years, but a reanimation enchantment was created. It would grant the doctor the eternal life he sought. With fortune still on his side, everything went according to plan. When the scientist passed, the sorcerer was there, and he performed the magic. Waking up in his new body was a surreal experience for the doctor. Adjusting took time. He was relieved to find that he could see, speak, and hear, though his senses were diminished. His speech was garbled, and his sight wasn't the best, but he was alive again. He continued his life's work so he could grant immortality to the sorcerer and others. The greatest thinkers, inventors, and enchanters of his time could live forever. Dr. Craven had become a frightful sight to behold, so he hid in the shadows away from the eyes of the public. People often fear things that they don't understand, and they weren't ready for him. One evening, he was walking through the forest when he saw something odd. It looked like a young girl strolling through the darkness. There was only one way to tell for sure. He had to get a closer look. Sure enough, it was a child. Even with his poor sight, he could see that she was enchanted. Scared for the youngster, he followed her. Soon, he saw it, a house. It looked like it was made from pink sugar. It was clearly enchanted. She walked into the home, and he followed her. He overpowered the witch inside, 
grabbed the child and ran. The girl was shaking with fear when they made it back to town. Unable to speak clearly, he couldn't communicate with her. But a neighbor lady saw them. Fearful that the monster might hurt the girl, the lady screamed at him. Dr. Craven was also scared. He hadn't wanted to be seen, so he fled. When the child arrived home, her parents were overwhelmed with joy. They bought her gifts, gave her a ton of attention, and made her favorite foods. This is something the neglected girl had never had before. Her traumatic experience had somehow improved her life. It was the happiest she had ever been, and she felt loved by her mother for the first time ever. They started taking trips to the market together, and her mother would even walk with her to school. On the other side of town, the neighbor lady was hailed a hero for saving the girl from the monster. The townspeople were terrified. A group formed to hunt down the child-snatching beast. Day and night, they combed the forest, setting traps and looking for the creature. The doctor, however, was laying low. He knew he'd been seen, and he couldn't make that mistake again. But fortune had turned against him. His sorcerer friend was spotted slipping through the forest, and the suspicious townspeople followed him. They saw him enter Dr. Craven's lab and grew suspicious. They stormed in and discovered the secret within. The doctor tried to explain, but he wasn't understood. The sorcerer tried as well, but the mob was not willing to hear it. They tied up the monster and led him to the town square. A crowd gathered to see the beast. He was tall, with thick skin and metallic parts, like nothing they'd ever seen before. The neighbor lady came forward and confirmed that this was the monster she'd seen with the girl. The sorcerer pleaded his case, but what value was there in the word of a stranger? The witness was a respected member of the community. Who should they believe? So the child was brought forward. She was asked what happened that night. In that moment, she could save the doctor's life by telling the truth. She looked into his big blue eyes and remembered how scared she'd been that night and how he had saved her. She looked at her mother, who had never paid any attention to her until that night. The girl took a breath, stepped forward, and spoke. She confirmed that, yes, this monster had kidnapped her and tried to force her into the forest. Horrified, the townspeople took justice into their own hands. Dr. Craven's life work, the body he'd forged and perfected for years, was destroyed by fire. The girl went home with her now doting mother. The pink witch moved into a different forest and continued luring children with her spell. Some say 
the sorcerer was able to capture Dr. Craven's soul before it was destroyed by the fire. But that's a story for another day. The end. Please like, share, subscribe, all of those things. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. I couldn't do this without you.